So today we're going to talk a little bit about Texas Ranger badges. They're pretty famous, the Texas Rangers, for these Circle Star badges here. In fact, the Circle Star uh, is kind of a big symbol in the state of Texas. Shows up a lot with the Texas Rangers, but also a lot with decorations and all kinds of different things. But what a lot of people don't know is that uh, early Texas Rangers wouldn't have even had badges. Uh, when they were created back in 1823, they were kind of uh, frontier fighters to help protect the frontier against Native Americans and other general banditry. And they were, for the most part, just kind of called up when they were needed. Uh, they'd fight maybe for three months, even less than that, and then they would be disbanded again. So they didn't really need any mark of authority back then. It wasn't until the 1870s, when a law was passed in 1874, that changed the Rangers from kind of frontier fighters to frontier law enforcement that they finally needed something to prove that they were Texas Rangers. And it wasn't even a badge yet. All it was was a piece of paper, like the one in the middle here, uh, called a warrant of authority, signed by someone in the Texas government saying, hey, this guy's a Texas Ranger. This one, in fact, is signed by Sam Houston during the Republic of Texas era. Now, there were a few Rangers that had badges from this time period, mostly because they liked them. Um, and it was a symbol of authority for other police groups, but they were not official in any way. Um, and the Rangers had to have them made themselves. They were not issued by the state. And that's actually the first official badge, which is this one in the center in the 1880s, used by Ira Ayton's group, uh, Company D. But it wasn't until quite a lot later that they were issued official badges. So when we get into the 1990s, the Rangers have started to become even more a unified kind of law enforcement agency. And they start wanting badges just to prove who they are when they're going into cities, but the state still wasn't issuing them. And so this is where we get a lot of the different shaped Ranger badges. We've got shield badges, star badges. Um, the circle star is already kind of a popular look, but again, there's really no authority behind these badges. They still needed that warrant of authority to prove who they were. And a lot of times these badges would say State Ranger or Texas Ranger or some combination thereof. It actually wasn't until 1935 that the Texas Rangers joined the Texas Department of Public Safety and were issued their first official badge, which is the one right here where you've kind of got a circle star look put over a shield. And then we get to the 1950s, they're issued another badge, which is the circle star look over a field of blue. It's actually based on an early Texas flag, but for whatever reason, the, that was not popular with DPS or the Texas Rangers. So in the 1960s, they were issued their Circle Star badge that they are famous for today. Now, the interesting thing about all of the badges that Rangers wear today is that they're all made out of a silver cinco peso Mexican coin. Uh, this goes back to those very first early badges we were talking about. A silver coin was an easy stamp to make the badge out of, an easy blank. And so we've continued that tradition today. And you can actually often still see the uh, imprint of the coin on the back of the badge. Now, uh, the silver badges are for ranks of a kind of field ranger and lieutenant. And then once you make captain, major, or above, chief, assistant chief, you can get a gold badge. And that's pretty much the history of Texas Ranger badges. The Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum is excited to announce the launch of a new internet portal to historical collections at the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum. Visitors worldwide can browse a selection of the 20,000 artifacts, artwork, photographs, and documents preserved for future generations in the permanent collections. These resources are made available to the public for education, research purposes, and personal enjoyment. We hope you'll explore our collections and check back often as new material is added. The project was developed by a team including Rachel Smith, Assistant Collections Manager, Zachary Baker, Baylor Student Intern, and Shelley Crichton, Collections Manager. We encourage you to explore the items now on the system with many more to come. 
Explore the selection of objects, archives, and photographs at texasranger.pastperfectonline.com. Thank you for having me to the uh, Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum. It's an honor to be here. It's a privilege and it's very exciting. It's a be very beautiful place to say the least. When I go out in the world, if I'm in South America, Argentina, where I go a lot, where my wife is from, Europe, New York, San Francisco, wherever you name it, people will come up to me and say, Augustus McRae in Lonesome Dove. And I will say that is my favorite part ever. I will say to them and anybody, let the English play Hamlet and King Lear. My Shakespeare is Lonesome Dove, and Augustus McRae is my favorite part. And he was a great Texas Ranger. And I'm sure that anybody out there in the world that would like to come to this wonderful museum, please come. It is a wonderful place to have respect and awe for a great institution, the Texas Rangers. Gus and Woodrow, would have really liked this place. The Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum in Waco is the official State of Texas repository and archive for anything to do with the historic Texas Rangers. When you visit Waco, stop by the Ranger Museum and explore the thousands of historic items on display that trace the history and legends on the infamous Texas Rangers the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum and Research Center is located on I-35 near downtown Waco, and they're open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Discover the legends of the Texas Rangers in Waco.